Good morning, Muskrat Jim here on my back deck on a overcast day. We're expecting rain on and off for the next few days. Um, anyway, I was just about to make myself a cup of coffee and I figured that I'd make a little video. Um, I'm going to try a couple of products here that I, I purchased and haven't had an opportunity to try them out yet. Um, I'll just uh, re-angle the camera and uh, point them out to you. Okay, so here we have a um, multi-tool. It's not a Leatherman. Leathermans are quite expensive. Uh, this one is, um, it says Pro Pocket Fishing Pliers by Coast. I bought them at Walmart for $19.99. They come with um, needle nose, pliers, cutter, crimpers, that sort of thing. Um, the other basic tools, scissors, screwdriver bit on this side. We have a nice blade, serrated, and um, it's a drop point and it's quite pointy. Um, another screwdriver, an awl, nice and sharp. And then on this side, we've got a typical can opener and a smaller screwdriver. Um, here we've got my cup and a little can of Sterno. It says, I don't know if you can see it there, but it says that the can is good for one hour. Um, I bought this in a package of three cans. I've got a, a bit of a stove here. Let me just demonstrate that to you. This is just a ring of, hmm, what is it? Um, it's used to support copper pipes and things in your basement in the ceiling. So I just cut out a length that would fit around the ring there and provide ventilation so I could set my cup on top. This nail, um, it's just used to clamp this together so it doesn't flip around. Gives you a little bit of a handle. Let me just put that together for you. So it's just simple like that. Okay, now the thing about opening cans, or opening anything else, is that you should never use a knife blade to pick this up. You should use the right tool for the right job all the time. So anyway, I'm going to use my small screwdriver. So just a small screwdriver tip. Take that off. Little stove on. Sets in the groove there. Now, I bought myself a um, ferro rod and striker. Um, I never had one before. I've never actually used one before. Um, my biggest problem, I think, was that it's more of a two handed sort of an operation. So I modified this lanyard so then I could put it on my arm like this. I can tighten this up. Good and snug. And then it's still long enough to use the the striker. So I'm going to uh, attempt to light this now. This is the first time I've ever used a ferro rod. I guess there's some black stuff on the ferro rod that's got to be uh, scraped off first. There we go. Yeah, that's really it. Okay, the thing about an alcohol flame is that you really can't see it unless it's at night or something. Uh, bright daylight kind of hides the flame. Yeah, that's hot. Okay, so we're going to put some water in my cup. Yeah, it's still going. Set that on top of there. And... That out of the way. I have my Blackberry here, and I'm going to just set the um, the timer on it. See how long this takes to boil. Okay. Well, as it turned out, every time I'd put my cup on top of that little ring for a stove, it would actually snuff the fire out. So the holes in the ring didn't give it enough 
oxygen to maintain the fire. So you can probably hear the rain hitting my umbrella here. Um, so that's a little bit of bad luck too. Uh, anyway, so I took a pair of tin snips, cut that ring down a little bit, and uh, I just want to show it to you now and we'll try lighting it again. So as you can see in here, the rain started coming down a lot harder. And it's raining pretty hard. So I've brought the experiment indoors and we'll uh, take it from there. Okay, so here we are in the kitchen and I'm just going to set up the items here in front of me and I'll redirect the camera so that you can see over my shoulder and we'll carry on. Okay, so we'll try this again. I have to open my can of canned heat. External. It's a gelled fuel. Put my little stove on top. Try to get it started. Actually, I think I'm going to try to get started without that on top first. Okay. Now that that's flaming, put the stove on, put the cup on. Right. You can see that. Counting up. And we'll just let that continue on. Yep, still burning. Okay, let that continue on. I'm going to cut the video and come back when it's starting to steam. And we'll see how long it took. Okay, the can itself was getting a little hot and didn't want it to melt this uh, vinyl placemat. So I actually put a, a ceramic dish underneath it, ironware, or stoneware. And the flame is still going. Anyway, we're at 3 minutes and 17 seconds. So I'm just going to cut the video and we'll be back once it starts steaming. Well, as you can see, it's been 15 minutes. The cup is steaming quite well. But the bubbles, I don't know if you can see them, they're still stuck to the bottom of the cup. So that means it isn't actually boiling yet and the flame is still going um, as I said earlier in the video these cans are good for an hour of continuous burn and uh, because it's been 15 minutes already one of these cans would only be able to heat up four cups of water um, but not to the boiling point I'm going to continue to let this burn just to see if it'll actually come up to a boil. Well, I'm really disappointed in this concept of a pocket stove. Um, I'm going to try the little alcohol burner stoves instead with the liquid fuel. Um, I was able to raise this cup up hot enough to make a cup of coffee. It's not boiling, but I mean it's hot enough to make a cup of coffee and I used about a third of that can in 20 minutes so their estimate of one hour is is bang on um, yeah so anyway um, I'm going to make my coffee have a lunch and uh, we'll see you around this is Muskrat Jim signing out well it stopped raining well for the most part I'm still getting a few drips in my plate here um, but anyway, I figured I'd eat outside. Much nicer out here. Um, anyway, until next time, bon appetit.